most adaptation planning in the U.S. is sort of getting prepared to cope with impacts yet to emerge. Alaska is a place where they're already real. Uh, thawing of the permafrost is already causing uh, damage to coastal, uh, to, to, to surface infrastructures such as highways and buildings. Uh, and the, the traditional communities have found many of the aspects of their ways of life going away as temperature increases change wildlife and the ways that they live. The assignment to the adapting panel was this. For those climate changes that we cannot avoid, or for those climate changes that we do not avoid, how can we adapt to the impacts in ways that reduce disruptions and pain to the human systems and natural systems that we care about? The challenge with adaptation is that there, the attention to adaptation is fairly recent. There's not a large research literature. There's not a large base of experience that is based on actual adaptation efforts for climate change. There have been a lot of efforts to cope with climate variability, historic uh, swings between hot and cold, wet and dry, but outside those historical envelopes there's not much evidence. So what we tried to do as a panel was to pay attention not only to research evidence, which is very limited, but also to what practitioners are learning from uh, uh, work in state and local governments in the private sector and non-governmental organizations. Decision makers really don't have the information that they need. Um, in some places that have taken um, the issue seriously, like New York City, they've actually gone out and created their own panels to provide their own information about climate and climate change and climate variability. Um, local communities along coastlines throughout New England and down in the south uh, have been uh, scrambling to try to figure out uh, what the future might well, hold. Water resource managers uh, concerned with climate variation, which means variations in water supply from season to season and weird year to year, basically look at options like water storage as the way to be prepared for, uh, for surprises. If climate change is more severe, they're going to have to go beyond that to look at things like improving the efficiency of water use on the demand side, such options as possibly the movement of water from one drainage basin to another. Uh, more severe demands on groundwater resources, and we don't know very much about groundwater dynamics. In areas close to the sea, they're going to be interested in desalination technologies. Maybe the biggest challenge is that what makes sense in adapting to climate change is so context specific. What makes sense in one location for one sector facing one set of threats is very likely to be different from others. What makes sense in Gulfport, Mississippi is different from what makes sense in Phoenix, Arizona, which is different from what makes sense for a ski resort operator in New Hampshire. Adaptation is best thought of as a risk management process, uh, fundamentally because of the, the great deal of uncertainty about how the future will unfold, some of which is uncertainty about the underlying science and the local manifestations of climate change and climate variability. Some of it is because we don't know how humans are going to respond in terms of slowing the pace of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, you can certainly categorize, as New York City did, um, as it uh, started to think about its adaptation plans for infrastructure, uh, three or four different categories of likelihood and three or four different categories of consequence. Um, and be able to judge those in a qualitative sense. To do that, you need to consider a range of possible future climate conditions, identify adaptation op options, uh, implement adaptations that make some sense now, begin planning for a more effective um, uh, adaptation in the future as the risks become more severe. What we need is not a federal response, but a national response. A national adaptation program should be one in which the federal government provides technical and scientific resources that are lacking at local and regional scales, uh, incentives for state and local governments and other parties to begin adapting, attention to some current policies that may in fact be maladaptive, uh, a clearinghouse for sharing lessons learned, and support for scientific research to expand knowledge of both impacts and adaptation options. No one party can understand all the relevant contexts. No one party is the right one to make all the right choices. 
America's climate choices for adaptation are all about partnerships. Adaptation is fundamentally a state and local issue. Um, that's where the decisions have to be made and that's where the implementation will occur. Um, but there's no reason in the world that everybody has to reinvent the wheel. Um, there's uh, certainly a, a, the possibility of learning from uh, the experiences of other places, from learning about how the science is evolving, uh, learning about the implications and the insights generated from monitoring um, existing adaptation projects. Uh, all of that is, is information that uh, local and state adapters uh, will need to uh, tap into. And, uh, you dramatically increase the efficiency of adaptation efforts around the country.